Aloha, and welcome back to another episode of Gil Gets It Done, a monthly uh, program where we feature uh, various people, facilities, activities, and businesses, and charities in the North Shore District. My name is Gil Riviere, and I am the representative in the state legislature. And it is a great honor today to be out in uh, Kahuku at Kahuku Medical Center. And today what we're going to do is talk about some of the great work that is happening at this facility, the improvements that have been made, the uh, optimistic future, and, and just basically the, the health um, uh, and health care for our, our North Shore District. With me right now is Dr. Oakley Davis, and he's in charge of the emergency room. And uh, welcome to the show, doctor. How are you Thank today? You. Good, thanks. Good. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for taking time to, to talk with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, there, you're with a group that uh, has an ar umbrella that uh, works emergency services for various hospitals. Is that, is that correct? Could correct. you could you tell us a little bit about uh, HEPA? Sure. Uh, what it stands for, what it means, and, and how it all works. Sure. It's uh, Hawaii Emergency Physicians Associated. Uh, it's a group of emergency med medicine doctors. Uh, got its start in the islands in, on Oahu in 1971, and. Uh, has been a continuous presence here since that time. Uh, at this point, we cover five hospitals. Uh, well, yes, three on Oahu, two on, on the Big Island. Um, we, and most specifically here, we cover Wahiwa General Hospital, Castle Medical Center, and as of January 1st, we're uh, here as well. All right, yeah. all right, welcome yeah. to the district. Thank you. So when you, you, you provide emergency medical services, is that the idea? And you provide it in the smaller hospitals, mm -hmm. so by having uh, more, almost kind of like a co-op, is that, is that an unfair uh, way to say it? But it's a cooperative arrangement to provide services? How does that work? We're essentially, uh, we're, a, we're a group of, a democratic group of physicians who, yeah, are essentially cooperative together, and then we provide services to these various uh, 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 emergency departments on the island. So, so one, of the, uh, one of the concerns about Kahuku Medical Center is a, a few years ago when it was on the verge of uh, shutdown, uh, it was saved and then over the last few years I, I think common knowledge has been well it's just a glorified um, um, emergency room or it's just a clinic it's not um, it's not really anywhere I want to end up so maybe you uh, with you guys coming in I think you really bring a lot more strength could you talk a little bit about uh, the services that are available and, and what you guys can do now? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, we, we hope to do that. Uh, basically, uh, we provide uh, board-certified emergency physicians, so meaning we're all trained in emergency care, and that's uh, basically the initial assessment and stabilization of all patients from uh, birth to uh, geriatrics. Uh, and uh, so, so we'll be providing 24-hour coverage for that here. Um, and we hope to uh, use some of our connections with Wahiwa, with Castle, to uh, get a uh, integration as appropriate with with the essentially the, the flanking hospitals here, and uh, we think that can really help to uh, coordinate community care. You know, there's uh, certainly things that can be provided here, things that can be provided at the other places, and we're in a good position to assess the situation and decide uh, uh, where the best place is for uh, any given patient. So what is the, uh, the service area that uh, would be the kind of the target area where if somebody gets injured and they need emergency service, how, how far each way up and down the coast would somebody come here first? I would say the uh, going west roughly in the Pupukea area, uh, Waimea area, and then uh, I'd say down to uh, Haula possibly, I'd say. And then, okay, and so this area. area. And if you're on either side of that, maybe you have a choice where you, you, you know, might go to Castle, if you're towards Kailua, or you might go to sure. yeah, Wahiwa yeah, if, you, yeah, if you go the other way. Uh, uh, per, uh, if you're in the gray zone, you could go either way, I think. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, the emergency services, uh, the emergency vehicles um, are stationed at the local fire stations, or uh, where are the ambulances in, uh, out here in the North Shore? There is, they're at the fire station here. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, uh, so there's a, uh, there's a station here. There's a station in Haleiwa, a uh, station in uh, going around to Wahiwa. Uh, and then the next station is uh, Kailua. Okay, yeah. okay, great. The number of uh, patients, has it, has it been growing uh, emergency-wise? Or um, we've got some other folks we're going to talk with about some of the other longer-term sure, patients. Sure. Uh, well, we just started in January. I think the numbers yeah. are so far are on track for how they've been for the, the end of the year. Uh, it's been a, a bit of a busy time island-wide, I think, with the recent uh, hot closures of the HMC system. Uh, so uh, I think there's definitely potential for increased volume. Uh, and we hope to uh, 
attract more people to come to Kuku and uh, and you know, get people in. Yeah, I think I think the, uh, it's a matter of people being aware that it it is yeah. a real viable, safe, yeah. and a healthy alternative for uh, for emergency services. Definitely. Um, is there anything more that you guys are doing now that HEPA is on board with the hospital? Is there um, any additional services or is it just, it's mostly the coverage, the 24-7 and, and the, the facilities uh, coverage? What, what, what's the, the greatest improvement of bringing you guys on board? Well, I think just that we've got, we're a, a cohesive group. We've got a, a, we're all board certified emergency physicians, so they're, uh, you're, you know that if you do come here, you're going to uh, get somebody who's trained to care for you appropriately. Um, and like I said, we have a, a stable presence in the islands where all the physicians are island residents. So, you know, there's nobody flying in to, to pull shifts or anything like that. So we have a good understanding of, of the community. Uh, most, we, we all live on, on Oahu, of course, and many of us live um, on the North Shore. Uh, several others in Kailua, so we're all in, in the area. I think that's a that's benefit excellent. As well. So you're you're, you're tied you're we're, tied we're to the air for the success here, yeah. of this. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Great. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about uh, your experiences th thus far at Kahuku Medical Center? Well, I say I've been here two weeks, and I just uh, I've can't say enough about how positive my experience has been. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's it's very n nice facility. It's uh, it I, it's a course small but it's very well appointed and uh, it's, I've found that the staff has just been wonderful to deal with uh, and work with and it, there's a lot of positive energy and I think things are, are really um, uh, there's really a lot of potential for growth here and, and providing a lot more services to the community so I'm excited to be here. That's uh, outstanding. Yeah. I appreciate you taking time to speak with us today and I wish you all the best and uh, we'll uh, catch up with you again at some other time. Thank you. Th thank you very much. Okay. okay. Aloha and welcome to Kahuku Medical Center. We are the only facility in this area offering hospital inpatient, outpatient, and ancillary services such as IV therapy and wound care, wireless cardiac monitoring, ultrasound, pharmacy, food and dietary, and physical therapy. The next closest facilities are Wahiwa and Castle Medical Center. Wahiwa Hospital is about a 45 minute drive away and Castle Medical Center is about a 75 minute drive away. The history of this facility goes back as early as 1929 as a plantation clinic. Kahuku Hospital became a non-profit entity and was renamed Kahuku Medical Center. New administration, mission, values, and vision were implemented. The vision for Kahuku Medical Center is to become a trusted healing resource partner in the Ko'olau Loa community so that it will be healthy and thriving for all generations to come. With the change from Kahuku Hospital to Kahuku Medical Center, a guiding standard is found in the phrase Kulia i Kanu'u, strive to reach the summit and the goal to strive for excellence. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we have with us now uh, Dr. Raul Huda, and he is the uh, Kahuku Medical Center hospitalist. Uh, that's a new term to me. I don't know about everybody watching this show, but uh, hospitalist is, is a specialty, and it, it brings a, another level of professionalism to the Kahuku Medical Center. I just want to welcome you onto the show. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. And uh, if you could tell us, what is a hospitalist? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, actually. A lot of people in the community don't are not familiar with that term. The term was coined in 1995 actually by a guy named Dr. Wachter who was a, a physician at the UCSF and basically it was the beginning of sort of a split uh, from what family doctors used to do to what they do now. Um, in the old days Dr. Smith and the community um, would take care of you in the clinic for your checkups and if you got sick enough to be in the hospital he would come to the hospital and also see you. Mm -hmm. However he was also doing the duties in the clinic at the same time. Um, as times have changed, and these days people are actually sicker than ever because they're living longer, mm. so they get 
admitted to the hospital. That's ironic, isn't it? You live it's, longer and you're yeah, sicker. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're sicker without also do well, but right. because of the increased strain of taking care of patients in the hospital, the increased time commitments of doing things in the clinic, there's been a need to actually have a doctor dedicated to just take care of the hospitalized patients. And that way, the clinic doctor can do what they're most comfortable doing, which is staying in the clinic and doing that. So they sort of form relationships with groups like mine okay. um, or hospitals that are employed by the hospital to take care of their hospitalized patients. And then we communicate with the community doctors um, on a regular basis. We send them all the, the records and stuff. So they're well informed, but we're the ones making the decisions. So let's say that um, <clears throat> um, I have a, some sort of condition and I've been meeting with my local my regular doctor mm -hmm. and then he says well we're gonna have you know something has come up and we have to get this taken care of you've got to go to the hospital uh, that doctor then um, sends me to the, this facility and then communicates with you and then you take over yeah is there's it? sort of three players involved uh, in a situation like that one is that the doctor might send you to the emergency department um, and the emergency department with doctor would evaluate you like he would any patient in the emergency department and at that point he would usually call your doctor back let them know what's going on and your doctor would probably say, would you mind getting the hospitals involved or call the hospitalist directly? And then we would sort of, he would hand that patient off to us and we would take care of the patient and then communicate with them regularly as needed. Okay, great. And are you with HEPA also? Are you uh, an employee of the medical center? How, um, how, how do you, so our, where, where do you fit in that? Our group is similar to HEPA. We have our own actual organizations okay. called Inpatient Medicine Services. Uh, we've been in Hawaii since 2007. Okay. And actually, we have done hospital contracts at other hospitals on the island. Uh, most recently, we were at the, actually at the Hawaii Medical Center before they closed, and we're currently the hospitalist um, program at Castle Medical Center as well. Okay. So, so are there are there um, are you the hospitalist for this facility, or do you uh, work in concert with uh, some other doctors? I'm, I'm the main hospitalist here, but we actually are getting other hospitals to join the medical staff. So pretty soon, we're, we're building up our our sort of um, you know. Armamentarium of doctors and to coverage and, to, and, and exactly. And, and, um, and so yeah, we will have at one point we'll have pretty much most of our doctors. Our group is about 15 doctors currently okay. um, throughout the island. So we'll have most of them on staff here just to provide you know backup coverage, etc. Great. And I understand that uh, just as soon as you came on board, things changed around here in the hospital. All of a sudden, people were willing to admit patients, and and just by having a hospitalist here and you guys. It's, it's that, that in itself has had a significant change. In Absolutely, yeah. We had, I mean, it's going to sound something, I think some like 800% improvement in admissions or something like that. Wow. Um, and it's just having, you know, someone available that's dedicated to the hospital. And the key thing about hospice, where we provide our value to the hospital is, one is, that's all that we do. So mm -hmm. we have a, a niche um, that we specialize in and availability. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're available to the hospital. We have no other clinic that we're, that we're splitting our time with. And also, we have an attention to what's important for the health of a hospital, as well as the health of the patient. So things like you know, quality measures, implementing certain programs, working with the emergency department to improve their uh, flow and throughput. We're trying to sort of be a, a good partner to all the different pieces of the hospital because sort of we're, we run through the fabric of the hospital in that we communicate with almost every department yeah. because we're on the premises all the time. So you provide that cohesive management of, of, of the patient uh, through? Yeah. Until until discharge, and then then, and then you work again with their their doctor if they have one to um, report what's going on. Absolutely, a lot of times up at the time of discharge, we may you know recommend that even though the patient is being discharged, that they should do the follow up testing of this mm -hmm. type or that type, or even give them some insight. You know, your patient came here uh, with a low blood sugar. You might consider doing this, or we discovered this. Um, you know, during the hospitalization that you may not have known, things like that that okay. pop up when we're 24 hour monitoring the patient. Okay, by comparison, just to get a uh, handle on this, the, uh, if a patient were, if a, uh, a physician had worked with a, a, a large hospital, say, and, and somebody was admitted, the patient was admitted to the large hospital, mm -hmm. does that hospital have a whole bunch of hospitalists working yeah. in there? Yes. So the, the, that doctor's not coming and going to that hospital? Right, um, right, exactly. And that, it's, so it's a model that works at every level of, size of hospital, whether it's small or large. Absolutely, and I, quite frankly, I think having a hospital's program a hospital is the rule now, not the exception. Mm -hmm. Almost all hospitals these days have hospital's programs. As a matter of fact, the hospitalist as a specialty is the fastest growing specialty in medicine. Mm. Um, there were zero in 1995, and there's almost 30,000 and, now, and, and of course, which makes one the second specialty in medicine. That's amazing. Behind ER physicians. That's amazing, and and of course, that 
leads me into a whole long conversation, which we won't have time for, but the, the cost of medical treatment. Is that helping keep uh, the overall cost down by providing that service? Um, maybe that's a trick question, but... No, it, it, yeah. uh, it's, it's an extremely valuable question. And the answer is, the short answer is, is yes. That, mm -hmm. that is why hospitalist programs have gained popularity amongst hospitals, mm -hmm. is that, again, because they're dedicated, things can move more quickly in the hospital realm. And without belaboring how reimbursements work, um, timely care mm -hmm. saves money. Okay. Timely, appropriate care saves money and improves outcomes. And so hospitalists are, are trained to deliver that type of care. Excellent. Well, thanks uh, so much for being on. I, I, I will uh, like to ask you one more thing. Is there something I forgot to ask or should have asked? Uh, anything you'd like to say about uh, your experiences here at Kahuka? Uh, well, just that it's been an excellent experience. And, you know, I think in terms of not just healthcare, but everything, sometimes people think bigger is necessarily better. Mm. Um, I don't think that applies in healthcare. I think, you know, what I've experienced at Kahuku has just been that even though it's a small institution, um, there's certainly things that we necessarily can't provide like a larger institution. However, what we, what we do provide, I think we do extremely well. And the added benefit you get from going to a small hospital is a personal connection, mm -hmm. sort of a tailored care. You know, you're, you're being taken care of people that live in your community most of the time. Um, and you can get a personal connection. For example, I met a patient one day, and four days later, I met that patient's cousin. Mm, okay. <laughs> and didn't know it. Just oh, sort of really? Thinking, oh, okay. I heard about you. You took care of my cousin for a day. So you sort of, you know, form bonds with people in the community, and I think that's really valuable. And it's your task, really, to determine whether this facility can handle the treatment or refer, stabilize, and refer to another place. Would that be It's, it's a collaboration, quite yeah. frankly. Multiple people give input. Uh, I give input. The emergency department gives input. Even mm -hmm. nursing staff give input. And, and so we decide what we can and can't handle. And so far, we've actually not had any case where we you know, um, admitted a patient that wasn't, that couldn't be appropriately cared Right, of him. you took good care of him. So, yeah. well, that's outstanding. I'm excited. I love this uh, facility. I'm, I'm great. I'm really um, pleased to be able to meet you and the other people at the uh, Kohuku Medical Center. So, oh, hey, thanks for coming on board thank and uh, talking with us. Great, thank you. Aloha. All right, now we have uh, with us uh, Stephanie Violetti. She is the director of Kahuku Medical Center, and uh, she's come on board uh, in the uh, last few years to take leadership of this uh, facility. And, and I think Stephanie gets a huge amount of credit for, for uh, making this thing uh, the success that it's becoming. So welcome on board, welcome. Thank you, Bill. And uh, thanks for being here and talking with us today. So Stephanie, tell us a little bit about Kahuku Medical Center. What's, uh, if you could maybe give us a brief history of uh, of the facility, where it's started, and how we got to where we are. Sure. How about that? Uh, Koku Hospital was uh, started as a plantation hospital back in 1928. Uh, and uh, so it was a small community owned hospital. And it continued on as a private nonprofit uh, hospital up until 2007. And in 2007, the Koku Hospital Board of Directors decided that it could uh, no longer carry on the debt that it had accumulated over the years, and it declared uh, bankruptcy. Mm. So this was uh, a Chapter 11. It was a scary time for the residents of the North Shore. It was, but thankfully, uh, the residents and we had key legislators that mm -hmm. went to bat for our area and really uh, pulled through. And we are now an affiliate of the Hawaii Health Systems Corporation or HHSC. Okay. So we are one of 12 uh, facilities on uh, Oahu as well as the Outer Islands. Uh, we are designated as a critical access hospital. And um, so it's been a good partnership. We are not a state agency. Um, we are an affiliate. So we have our own board of directors. And so you're not state employees. So we're not state employees, okay. correct. Uh, we have our own board of directors, directors. And so we do have some autonomy, mm -hmm. but we do have access to resources uh, when, when we need it. So it's, it's been a very uh, nice, uh, great solution yeah. uh, for what happened. And um, so we're very fortunate to, to continue uh, and uh, be here as a Kogu Medical Center, which uh, we became in 2008. Right, so I remember, I remember the 2007, 2008 timeframe um, there was a lot of uncertainty as to what was going to happen. And then 
then the word was the buzz, and I said this, uh, I don't know if this is good or bad, but the, the buzz was, well, it's just barely an emergency room. Uh, that was some people's sense of this facility. But since then, in the last five years, you guys have remodeled things, you're rebuilding things, you, uh, you know, we've got the, the physicians and the hospitalists and all these other things, so, so right on. Tell us, tell us how, yeah. how, how did that all come to be? Just good vision and hard work? Yeah, well, I think uh, Kahuku Hospital, you know, they've, they've gone through these ups and downs and expansions and pulled back services, um, you know, for a, a number of reasons. And before uh, Kahuku Hospital declared bankruptcy, it really pulled back its services. So we've had just, you know, just the basic core services. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how people uh, remembered uh, Kahuku as just being a, an emergency room because mm -hmm. uh, we had very few uh, outpatient services. Now we're kind of at this point where we're stabilized, looking at expansion and growth, um, and really being able to meet the needs of our community. Okay. And so bringing in, you know, quality, quality staff, uh, quality physicians, uh, focusing uh, on quality uh, is, is very uh, critical, uh, our pr a priority for Koku Medical Center. Yeah, we've seen, I've seen the, the you know, lab, your labs are, uh, you've got state-of-the-art equipment for testing, your, your uh, emergency rooms have all been uh, redone and, and up to, they're up to the latest standards and, and everything looks really good. Um, the addition, uh, we spoke earlier with, uh, with Dr. Uh, uh, Huda regarding the uh, hospitalist aspect of this. That, t talk about that if you could, about bringing him on board and his organization and what that's done because all of a sudden, you guys are getting busy now with, uh, I mean, not that busy is good, but it's good that uh, the, this business is here to, to take care of people. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Okay. Uh, our goal is to be able to take care of our community members um, right here at KMC with the services we currently provide. And so being able, physician practices are changing. And because of that, uh, they're very busy in the clinics. So bringing on uh, Dr. Huda and uh, and his group uh, made sense. Uh, we wanted to, you know, free up our community docs so they can do their job, and um, you know, being able to admit the patients that we can take care of uh, with a with a great group. So it just it just made sense. Mm -hmm. Good. And you also have a, a one part of the element of this hospital is there is some long term care too. Yes. Um, what should we know about that? What should the okay our. Uh, our long-term, uh, and people think of long-term care like a nursing home. So we do have 10 uh, long-term care beds, and the majority of those residents uh, are from our community. And they live with us. This is like their home. Uh, it's a home-like environment. Their family can come and go and stay with them. And those beds are always full. Uh, you know, they get great care, and, and it is their home. And um, yeah, so we do have 10 long-term care beds um, within KMC. Outstanding. What, what would be the takeaway, what would be the, the number one message that you'd like uh, people to know about Kahuku Medical Center? What, uh, what is a, about what, should, what should Center? people know, people, both that live in the, re in, in the region and um, statewide? Well, I'd like people to know that our number one priority, like I mentioned earlier, is, you know, focusing on quality. Um, you know, everyone here that works at Kahuku, all of our staff, um, housekeepers, nurses, physicians, administration. Uh, our focus is on providing uh, quality care uh, in all of our areas. So please come to us um, if you need any of our services. So that includes long-term care, um, acute care, um, radiology if you need an x-ray, um, laboratory, uh, rehab, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and um, rehab. So please come to us if, if you need medical care. Um, we're, we're doing great things here and we'd be happy to service you. Well said, well said. Well, we're going to leave it there. We've got some other uh, elements that we've put into the show um, of, of interviews and sites around the facilities. And um, I just wanted to wish you all the best and continued uh, health uh, for the facility and for the operations and for this district. So thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. This is another uh, edition of Gil Gets It Done, our monthly show. Uh, my name is Gil Riviere. I'm the representative for the uh, House District 46, which is the North Shore of Oahu. And uh, it's always a pleasure. We'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you.